everyone, Jenny B here. Tonight I'm going to give you my review of a production I watched on Monday the 9th of September. It was a production that has been written and brought to us by our very own queen of crime writing, talkie born Agatha Christie, and the production in question is the mousetrap now a little bit about mousetrap before we begin naturally it's a murder mystery who done it style of play it is only eight characters strong and not a character is wasted it was actually brought to the london west end back in 1952 and in november 2012 it reached a milestone of being the longest running west end production it had reached 25 thousand performances by November 2012 so quite an impressive stretch and I can imagine now it's probably way way more like nearly 40,000 as we reach now um, September 2019 possibly more I have genuinely no idea um, I also found out that this is drawn from a real-life crime that was committed in 1945 so it kind of made sense for the time frame as well that the fact that it was released in 1952 it basically played on winter time present day of 1952 because it actually used World War II continuation of rationing so it was quite well done and quite current when it was released but it's still quite palpable and quite significant and you know useful for today's productions on the stage it was really impressive to see it is situated in a manor guest house known as monks well manor guest house and it's just recently been inherited by the Rolstons mr. and mrs. Rolston newlyweds that have just taken on this manor and decided to run it as a business um, so we'll start off with the characters. Naturally, we'll start off with Mr. and Mrs. Ralston. So Molly Ralston was brought to me by Harriet Hare. Beautiful, young, proper, raised, nicely young girl who originally was a teacher, became a married woman and decided to live with her husband out in the countryside and do the running of a guest house. Um, she was very good at portraying a newlywed housewife um, not obviously used to the grind of working and cleaning and cooking for more than one person which um, she has to do in this at one point her husband Giles Rolston is was understudy for this particular production by Nick Waishana um, I feel he was a little rough around the edges but I did enjoy it and he bounced off um, his on stage wife quite nicely there were some times it kind of didn't work for me but other than that it, it was quite good watching them work together um, especially when there were certain tense moments or there were sad moments it, it worked really really well um, next up I will give you Mrs Boyle played by Susan Pen Halligan. Um, she is a real battle axe when she comes in. She has an opinion about everything and not always a good one either. Constant complaining, typical old woman to us anyway, but um made sense back then. Um, so you know when you when you go to a guest house you expect to see staff, but you know it's um everybody has to have a beginning so naturally it was uh, it was good to see and it was played very well she was very good at portraying someone you know who always had an opinion about everything always had a down comment to someone always snide to them in one way or another it was brilliant she was very good and I <laughs> definitely enjoyed watching her Next up, um, we'll look at Miss Casewell. Um, Miss Casewell was also understudied by Edith Kirkwood. Now, Edith Kirkwood was uh, very good. She was, as Miss Casewell, who is technically, I'd say, more tomboyish. She wore trousers compared to all the other women in the production. Um, so, obviously, she had flown from a... Well, sorry, not flown. She had come in from a different country. So, that, that was different to us already. Um, so, she definitely played that very well. Definitely had a secret, which they all do, essentially. But hers, I kind of sussed out quite early on just something gave it away that I knew who she was in the production I it was just too easy for me when it came to sussing out Miss Casewell's past 
just some things she said, the way she reacted, her body, uh, her body language was quite stiff in some respects, but it, it, it made sense to me that, oh yeah, I know who you are. I know your past. I know what you've been through or and done in your life. So I kind of instantly knew who she was. Um, but it was good, it was well done and she came back for a reason and that reason paid off in a way. Um, it's the same with everyone, everyone has a secret and it all does play out quite well and they all work together very well. Um, next up I will look at Sergeant Trotter, played by Jeff Arnold. He was the last person to enter into the production as a whole. He obviously is the policeman. Um, Again, he um, he was quite good. I quite enjoyed enjoyed him. Um, just felt like some of it kind of dropped a little bit when he was doing it. But when it came to staring off into space, like kind of doing a monologue off from someone, he was really good at that. I quite enjoyed it. So like he was trying to, you know, be this big, gruff police officer, but he, there was some cracks there. And I, I kind of could see that um, quite well. So he played that part very good. If that was how it was supposed to be, then well done for that one. Next up is Major Metcalf, played by John Griffiths. I feel Major Metcalf was a wasted character in a way. He's very good and he did help the story along, but I still feel he could have done more. He supported um, Molly Ralston quite well in certain aspects um, and it was it was well good. You, you never called him sir, it was always Major Metcalf. Major Metcalf, nothing else. And he had a bit of humour about him too, and he did like stick up for people when it needed to be. Um, he saw sense, he was quite, you know, uh, quite obtuse in some respects, but he was also very observant and he was very good at picking out things from people. But he, he had a reason to be observant. And that is also revealed as well at the end. It's so hard not to reveal anything to you guys, it's so hard. Next up is um, definitely uh, one of my first favourites, uh, Mr. Paravici, played by David Alcock. Now, Mr. Paravici is not English entirely. He has, I'd say, kind of either a French or Italian style accent. I couldn't really tell because um, I'm not that best at deciphering those kind of things, but he was actually quite funny. I enjoyed him and he took um, an incident too lightly and it kind of come across like whoa are you what are you you're weird it's so weird um you're just just like creeping me out but i absolutely loved watching him he was definitely my second favorite of the show and i really 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 enjoyed him so um definitely a laugh he had a really good um childish giggle and it didn't help whenever the song was played which is three blind mice <laughs> When he'd do it, it was like quite, ooh, ooh, what are you doing? <laughs> don't, don't, stop. Don't like it. But it was, he was fantastic. So definitely, definitely one of my favourites. But only, unfortunately, second place. But he was really good. Now, on to my absolute favourite. And it is definitely no means last. It is Christopher Wren, played by Lewis Chandler. He was brilliant absolutely funny and just how he was so camp and flamboyant and he was he just did this really like sheepish laugh so he would actually sing uh barbara black sheep he there was lots of well i would say lots of nursery rhymes but there was a few nursery rhymes but barbara black sheep was one of them and he'd sing it and then he'd do like a really sheep laugh and it was just hilarious he brought the most humor to the production and he was brilliant but when he was hurt he played that well too. He actually took it quite hard that he was hurt by most of the cast in this. And it's, um, oh, it was just incredible to watch him. But when he, but when he's just like, he is a bit like Paravici, you know, you, you, he'd be like taking it a little bit too lightly or just, you know, he's just way too casual about it all. And you just think, I kept switching between those two for the, for the, uh, for the murderer, for myself. And I was just like, but I kind of was like, please don't let it be Christopher Wren. I didn't want it to be Christopher Wren. And well, you're just going to have to find out to see if it's Christopher Wren. I'm afraid I can't tell you. I've been sworn to secrecy on this. Um, overall... I think it is definitely worth a watch. Um, if you're into murder mysteries, definitely go go see this production while it's in town. 
definitely something to enjoy. There's no music, it doesn't give you, I think that actually adds to the atmosphere a little bit because you usually expect sus suspenseful music, especially when there is a incident within the manor itself. Um, and the ending is just not what you expect. There's a huge twist. The ending is definitely not what I would have expected, <laughs> um, but it definitely leaves you with thinking, do you really know someone and how well people can hide behind other personas and things like that it was it was really good the cast is only eight people strong not wasted at all um and it was really really good so enjoyable to an extent if you're into that kind of thing i definitely definitely enjoyed the show and i definitely would probably go see it again uh but other than that, make sure you get your tickets. Saturday the 14th is the last day to watch this show, so don't miss out. It is brought to us by our very own talkie-born crime writer, Agatha Christie, and she is a major part of Tor Bay's heritage as a whole. She has basically changed the writing genre on its head. So if you ever get a chance to see anything by Agatha Christie, don't pass it up, especially this production. Enjoy it. Think about it and realise you, if you're no good at crimes, then definitely <laughs> you'll learn a thing or two when you're done with this. So um, that's it from me and I'll see you all next time.